Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. So today we're looking at our tolerance to G-forces in DCS World with respect to the newest aircraft, the F-16C, and in particular, does its seating arrangement for the pilot have any benefit like it does in real life? So what we're talking about is the inclined seating position of the F-16C. So other fighters, so let's just say the F-18 and, and the F-15, have pretty much straight back seats, more or less plumb back seats. And you sit more or less 90 degrees from the body of your man to the upper leg of your man. While the F-16 seat, the upright part, is not plumb up, it's in fact laid back at, I can't remember what it is, 25, 30 degrees, something like that. And although it's a little more awkward to sit kind of laying back like that, it's done for a good reason. And the reason is that it can increase the fighter pilot's G tolerance. So of course, we've got to go and find out now, is this model in DCS World? So you think that this would be easy to model. You think that you just get in an F-18, you would spin around in circles at 8G, 9G, see when the guy passes out, right? Then you just get in the F-16C, do exactly the same thing, see when the guy passes out. And if the F-16 can handle extra G or an extra 2G, then it works. But unfortunately, it's simply not as simple as that. Like most things in aviation, it can be very complex. And so we have to redefine what we're talking about. Let's just ignore the idea of this reclined seat for just a minute. And that's just talk about the angle of attack of the pilot what really matters here is not the incline of the seat what does matter is the angle of attack not of the aircraft but of the pilot especially his upper body and his head so to understand this i always suggest take it to the extremes if you're like me you're not the sharpest tool in the shed you need to take things to the extremes to get your head around it and then you get it so let's look at two identical aircraft f-18-1 here and F-18-2 here. They're both spinning around this circle. The diameter or the radius of the circle they're spinning around is different, but that doesn't really matter. What does matter is that they're both doing it at different speeds and different angles of attack as a result, but the same G-loading. Both of this F-18 here and this F-18 are pulling exactly 7G. This guy is doing it at 80 degrees angle of attack. So his path at this instant, at this break here, is that direction there. But the longitudinal axis of his aircraft is pointed 80 degrees up like that. And these are kind of side views, obviously. And he's traveling, I don't know, let's say 400 knots. This guy here is traveling 700 knots. And he's doing a larger radius circle. And because he's going so much faster, his angle of attack is much lower. His angle of attack is only 2 degrees here. So his path of travel is there. And the longitudinal axis of his aircraft is there, only 2 degrees away from his path of travel. But his net G-loading... On the aircraft, what is going to result on the guy's accelerometer is still going to be 7Gs. And again, that's what we're going to see later in DCS, almost certainly. But despite the fact that these two F-18s are both pulling exactly 7G, the effect on these pilots is completely different. It's a very important concept to understand. The centrifugal force always acts from the center of the circle. So for this guy here, because of his angle of attack, the force is pulling down, so it's pulling the blood from his head, and that's what all, this is all about. The G-forces in these fighters are not dangerous to the pilots in a physiological way, but what they do is obviously they drain the blood from the head. They pull the blood down, they pose the heart, and then the guy blacks out, so that's how it's dangerous. So with the 2 degrees angle of attack, a 7G, the vector of centrifugal force is pulling directly the blood out of the guy's brain down to his ass and down to his legs. This guy, exactly the same plane, still 7G, but because of the pilot's angle of attack, it's not pulling the blood out of his head at all. If anything, it's helping him because of the extreme angle of attack. It's actually pulling blood into his head. So it's almost like he's getting inverted G. Yes, these are extreme, but that's to help you understand the forces that we're dealing with. And the point I'm trying to make here is that we have to go and measure the G forces, the same G forces in the F-16 versus the F-18, but the aeroplanes must be at identical angles of attack or very close angles of attack, you know, within, within one or two degrees. So we have to go and do these tests with the F-18 at, I don't know, 10 degrees angle of attack just off the top of my head. And the F-16 will also have to be 10 degrees for this to be a valid test. It's a concept I really struggle to get through to some people. And so now that we've made angle of attack constant, this F-18 here at 2 degrees, this F-16 here at 2 degrees, we can look at the seat. Of course, the seat puts the pilot's angle of attack back another 25, 30 degrees, whatever it is. And so although that plane there and that plane there are identical in terms of angle of attack, and again, I've exaggerated the seat here. I've put it back at 70 degrees. But you can see that it has the effect of just pulling the blood to the back of his head, not down to his ass. And that's it. So what we do is we go and fly 
this and we'll put a control aircraft in as well. We'll put an F-15C just to make sure. We'll go and do the test with all the aircraft at the same angle of attack. Control and F-18 have more or less plumb straight back seats for as near as makes no difference. And the F-16 has its reclined upper seat. We'll then put that into tack view to ensure that the G loads on the aircraft record the same. Because we're not really sure in DCS whether it records the aeroplane's G load, which is different to the pilot's G load or effective G load, as we discuss here, based on the centrifugal, centrifugal force vectors. Then once we're in tack view, we can make the or confirm the final conclusion. Predictions. I get the feeling that none of this is probably modeled in DCS. I get the feeling that it's probably just done by loading on the plane. I very much doubt that the incline in the F-16 seat has been modeled in any terms, in any way, in terms of guy blacking out. I may be wrong, but uh, as ever, let's go and test it. Okay, so in we go. I guess we start with the F-15. It may be a bit troublesome because it is almost too fast for its own good at this kind of thing. But let's uh, go and have a go. You can see that the seat is slightly cantered back, but the pilot, give or take, is pretty much plumb. If you drew a, a, a vertical line from his head all the way down to his ass, it's pretty much plumb. Okay, so off we go. You can see at the bottom there, we've got our speed, IAS, we've got our uh, angle of attack there of the airframe. We've got the G. Again, I'm not sure if that's the G on the aircraft or the effective G on the pilot compensated. Probably just the aircraft, but we'll see. So I'm just going to find something that I feel will be comfortable to judge all three fighters at kind of speed i'm guessing about 500 knots is going to be common for these fighters angle of attack is a bit high at the moment angle of attack still a bit too high maybe a bit faster okay around 500 knots about seven degrees angle of attack i can maintain not seven point 7.9 G. Yep. About 7 degrees angle of attack. It will take a degree, you know, it's not going to make any difference, bearing in mind what we're talking about. The G was, I could clearly see exactly 7.9 uh, due to whatever that means, whichever G loading that is, probably on the airframe. I could hold 7.9 all day. 8, I couldn't. And 7.8, I would start to, uh, whatever the opposite type blacking out is, starting to recover. Uh, so that's that. And speed doesn't really matter. All that matters is we achieve just about the same angle of attack, but it was about 500 knots, I think. Let's see how well we can do. I'm not sure how multi-stage the afterburner is. We'll just find out the hard way, I guess. Ooh, this plane feels weird. It feels like a bus. Look at it. Just get a feel for it. Oh, it's quite fast, actually. Okay, we're too fast. The angle of attack's too low try with that one degree off I think one degree with it with him by fret one degree will be okay there we are seven degrees the G tolerance is seven point I felt 7.5 I need to do more Seven point four. Seven point four G at about seven degrees. Seven point four. Let's get my baby out, shall we? And we're off. Altitude. Altitude. Oh, it's fast, isn't it? Oh, Bennett. Right angle of attack's too low. Sure, we can manage. It's got the same blacking out effect as the uh, Sabre, which is pretty cool. I do love that. They do that. Angle of attack's good, and with the G seven point seven. 7.65. So I'm going to say 7.7. 7.7. Assuming that that down there is the airframe G and not the kind of effective pilot kind of blood G or whatever you want to call it, effective G. And then the F-50 the F at 7 degrees angle of attack got 7.9 G sustainable. And bear in mind that this, I believe, is directly out the game engine. So we're not com we're not, we've got no gauge inaccuracy in there, if you know what I'm trying to say. The F-18 was 7.4. At 7 degrees angle of attack, 7 degrees angle of attack for the Falcon, 7.7. .7. So it looks like the seat is not modelled at the moment, and that's kind of what I was predicting. But we'll go now and look at the tack view. Uh, just make sure all those, all that data added up okay. Uh, so latest one, pew, 15, off your toots, meow. All right, it may take a while to get established, G. 
And where's angle of attack? Where's angle of attack? There it is. I do apologise, but for some reason it says 17 degrees angle of attack. What the hell? What on earth was I looking at there? Uh, I'm just going to skip that for a minute. And that degree is 14. That's, this guy's 14, 15, 16 degrees angle of attack. And let's see what the 16 was then. It was also 14, 15 degrees angle of attack. What the hell was going on here? I'm just going to go and uh, rewatch that footage quickly. Okay, I've rewatched the footage and it definitely said 7 degrees angle of attack for all of those aircraft within, you know, half a degree. So why it's coming out here, now double that, basically double that. Uh, I don't know, sorry. I'm just going to ignore the angle of attacks in here. It shows they're all 15 to 17 anyway, so for whatever reason it's doing that. It's like it's converting them into units, but units would be plain specific, so even that's not right. So I don't know, we'll ignore that for now. But just uh, at least we can have a look at the G. We've got noted a constant of 7.4 for this aircraft, F-16. Uh, sorry, 7.7, .7, and you can see it pretty much agrees with that. I mean, it's hard to judge it perfectly, but I'm bouncing between, yeah, 7.7. .7. I'd agree with that. Uh, see what we've got the F-18. Make sure that adds up. Just make sure there's nothing weird here. Make sure it doesn't disagree for any reason. 7.4 I've got. Sustainable, yep. 7.4, happy with that. Just make sure. And the F-15, I've got 7.9. There you go. G, 7.9. So this agrees with DTS. Uh, probably is just the airframe rather than the effective pilot G. So, summary. We think the G-Force shown by the game engine, if you like, whatever you want to call it, and tack view is the basic airframe loading. Basic airframe loading. And the F-15 at, at 7 degrees angle of attack, what we believe is 7 degrees angle of attack, can sustain 7.9 G. F-18 C, F-A-18 C, at 7 degrees angle of attack, 7.4 G. Not sure why there's a difference there. F-16, split the middle, 7.7 G. So if that answers the question, at least at the moment, mid-October 2019, the seat does not increase your tolerance. But I hope I've explained why it would increase your tolerance and the factors that you've got to look at when looking at this in the grand scheme of things. Hope that was useful and see you later.